everyone, it's Stephanie. Thank you for clicking on my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Today's review and my personal takeaway is on the 2019 nonfiction book, On the Clock, What Low Wage Work Did to Me and How It Drives America Insane by author Emily Gundelsberger. I hope I pronounced that right. Emily is a 30-something cool writer who was already living life as a successful underpaid newspaper writer-editor when she began research on this book. But her salary was still double the low wages of each of the three jobs she interviewed and got at one, Amazon as a warehouse product picker, two, at Convergis on the phone as a customer service rep, and three, as a cashier at a McDonald's where she accidentally burned herself, an uncommon but regular occurrence at fast food restaurants. Essentially, the book is about what work life is like at three companies, very good at using the current technologies of algorithm and metrics to get every lower level employee to use every single second on repetitive, stressful, and what feels like dehumanizing work tasks, and not wasting it, taking up to a minute to recuperate in between irate angry customers on the phone or after angry customers throw objects at you or in between spasms of work-related pain where you work. The author worked for about a month at each of these companies and says the book is not an expose on them but representative of what work life is like at similar companies just more successfully at these three. Hmm. Here are highlights from the book other three jobs at which she worked. Starting at Amazon, where the author worked as a warehouse product picker, the automatic efficiency metrics program made sure everyone was moving, bending, and stretching to pick orders and not in any way wasting time socializing or using the bathroom more than three times in a work shift. The author averaged 15,000 steps at work. The vending machines at work were stocked with different pain medications. At least you did not have to pay for them. Workers just retrieved their pills by scanning their badges. Not in the book, but I could see where the data collected on which pain relievers the thousands of Amazon workers chose could be sold to distributors or pharmaceutical companies. Yay, an extra stream of revenue for Amazon. Anyway, the author was surprised to see pregnant women and seniors working just as well as anyone else there. Wow. There are many footnotes and references throughout the book, which despite the way it sounds, add many quick, fun, and interesting relevant tidbits of information. The author writes lucidly and with a cute factor. Writing really flows and is actually a fun read even when reading unfunny things. Next at Convergence in North Carolina, the author describes the limited time available to form friendships at work similar to all three jobs. As for the work itself, you can almost feel the stress as the author describes a customer screaming at her on the phone while she frantically researched something on the computer for her. You are not supposed to put a customer on hold. The author writes about hearing about the daily reports of how much time she spent with each customer trying to resolve their issues, if she went over the expected time, and by how much. During her time there, the author moved from living out of her car in a Walmart parking lot to becoming a low rent renter in the home of two co-workers, a lesbian couple with a baby who barely got by on their wages. They could not afford antibiotics when one of them got an abscessed tooth that started to affect her eye. Most co-workers who started out in training together either quit or were fired before the end of training. Finally, the author spent a month at a very busy San Francisco McDonald's where there was almost always a long line no matter what shift she worked. This was partially due to not enough staff ever being scheduled. Again, there are many amusing moments and anecdotal telling of stressful and frustrating situations. One of these stressful situations described is of a regular who shows up and orders coffee. McDonald's coffee is hotter than most, if not all, other fast food restaurants, gas stations, and restaurants. Just be careful. Anyway, if the regular is inadvertently served the coffee and not ignored, she ends up throwing it at someone, such as staff or customers, or at something. The author also tells the incident of an irate customer who complained loudly the whole time in line, then at the author, who was after all her cashier, about how she will not step aside to wait for her large special order. Then the customer demanded that everything be put into a bag instead, which would normally cost 15 cents. Then she complained about not having enough free dipping sauces, which normally cost 25 cents each. Then after one of the sauces fell onto the counter, the customer then proceeded to take a handful of sauces and slam them at the cashier, splattering the contents of the packages all over the author and the surrounding area. Then she accused the author of throwing the sauces at her. Then her friend yells that she saw it. Dang. 
there are some angry, nasty people out there. My opinion, the evidence would show that there was nothing splattered across the customer's chest except her negative aura. Of course, the author lost it, yelled at the customer, and then escaped to the walk-in freezer for a few minutes. And then she goes back to serve and hopefully not be accosted by the next customer in line. Of course, she was written up and then found out how this happens to all employees and she should just suck it up. My opinion, I guess fast food workers should just go at a fast, steady pace, ignore the screaming and insults, disregard any physical or emotional pain, and just continue serving people with all kinds of stains and bodily fluid on their uniform or body as if this is perfectly normal and fine. The author also relates how she lost grip of a loose coffee handle and burned part of her leg. She quickly treated the burn and pain with a band-aid and quickly got back to the line. Well, if you have worked in fast food, I guess you could relate. There are many other anecdotes in the book which may or may not sound familiar to you. The author also talks about the punishment of fewer scheduled hours for calling in sick or being an activist for the $15 an hour minimum wage. The author was actually employed by three different third parties for each of the three jobs she had. A franchisee owner for McDonald's and two different staffing agencies for AT&T and Amazon. On page 281, the author mentions that the way scientists test antidepressants on rats is to first get the rats depressed by taking away predictability and control and comparing this to human employee treatment the author mentions, among other things, the ubiquitous just-in-time scheduling, which leaves employees wondering when they'll be scheduled for the next week or sometimes even if they'll be scheduled for the next day. This scheduling works for employer shareholder profit margins, but not for employees' mental health. Oh well, who cares? Get robots. Just not sure who will have money to be customers for the robots to serve. There is an excellent summary at the end of the book, especially on pages 308 and 309. I highly recommend you read them, as well as the rest of this well-written book. In closing, I just wanted to mention that one point stated at the end and referenced throughout the book is that we are complex humans and most of us are not really at our best or even able to function adequately at jobs very high in stress and very low in human dignity, much less be inspired or encouraged by them. Thank you for watching this video. Please comment on it if you'd like or like and subscribe. I appreciate all of it. My name is Stephanie. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again on the next video.